Most people, when they think of an anti-war movement, think of college campuses and student protests. I'm here right now on the campus of the University of California, Berkeley, where in the 1960s, the free speech movement started the movement against the Vietnam War in the United States. That movement mobilized millions of people who were moved by the heart to oppose the violence, the death, and destruction of war. But something was missing. That heart needs to be engaged by the mind. We can learn what makes war more likely or less likely. And then we can act on that to try to secure a more peaceful world in the future. The authors in Peace, Love, and Liberty address these questions. What's the evidence? What can we know about war that can make it less likely? Professor Steven Pinker at Harvard University looks at the human experience of violence and finds it's been declining for a long time, and then asks what made that possible. Professor Robert McDonald from the United States Military Academy at West Point looks at one of the great accomplishments in the history of the anti-war trend, which is how the military was subjected to civilian control. Professor Eric Gardsky at University of California, San Diego, looks in detail at the important role that commerce, trade, plays in making war more costly to decision makers and encouraging people to stand up for peace. Those chapters and others provide information on how we can make war less likely, how we might even achieve a world without war.